good morning and welcome. Today we celebrate the solemnity of Pentecost. It's wonderful that we can all gather together in the spirit of love and friendship. We pray, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Send us as disciples for your mission. We gather in the spirit of love and friendship. Let us stand and sing together the entrance hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And on behalf of Father Kevin, Father Edwin, Father Alistair, and myself, it's just wonderful to welcome you here today to this Pentecost Mass. Our idea is that every now and then, Pentecost is a great time to do it, as we did last year, is to gather, as many of us together in two masses, just a chance to see us gathered together and to celebrate this great feast together. So it's wonderful that we're here, that we come to celebrate the life of the Holy Spirit amongst us and to ask the Holy Spirit today to fill us anew pour him as he pours himself out on the whole world. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. And with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Pentecost Day came round, the Apostles had all met in one room, when suddenly they heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven, the noise of which filled the entire house in which they were sitting. And something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak foreign languages as the Spirit gave them the gift of speech. Now there were devout men living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven, and at this sound they all assembled, each one bewildered to hear these men speaking his own language. They were amazed and astonished. Surely, they said, all these men speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears him in his own native language? Parthians, Medes and Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome. Jews and proselytes alike, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them preaching in our own language about the marvels of God. The word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you are. How many are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your riches. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You take back your spirit, they die, returning to the dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I find my joy in the Lord. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. No one can say Jesus is Lord unless he is under the influence of the Holy Spirit. There is a variety of gifts, but always the same spirit. There are all sorts of service to be done, but always the same Lord, working in all sorts of different ways in different people. It is the same God who is working in all of them. The particular way in which the spirit is given to each person is for a good purpose. Just as a human body, though it is made up of many parts, is a single unit because of all these parts, though many make one body, so it is with Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised, Jews as well as Greeks, slaves as well as citizens, and in one spirit was given to all of us to drink. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come, thou Holy Spirit, come, and from thy celestial home shed a ray of light divine. Come, thou Father of the poor, come, thou source of all our store, Come within our bosom shine. Thou of comforters the best, Thou the soul's most welcome guest, Sweet refreshment here below. In our labor rest most sweet, Grateful coolness in the heat, solace in the midst of woe. O more blessed light divine, shine within these hearts of mine, and our inmost being fill. Where thou art, not man had not, nothing good indeed or taught, nothing free from taint or fail. Heal our wounds, our strength renew, all our dryness for thy dew. Wash the stains of guilt away, bend the stubborn heart and well, melt the frozen warm the chill, guide the steps that go astray on the faithful who adore and confess thee evermore. In thy sample gift descend, give them virtue sure reward, give them thy salvation, Lord, give them joys that never end. 
Amen. Alleluia. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. Sing Alleluia to the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy when they saw the Lord, and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. We prayed, or, or Joseph sang for us um, in the Alleluia verse, Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. And then in the Gospel reading, we heard that when Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you, they were filled with joy. So the first thing I just want to do today is, Acknowledge that even though we spend all this time asking the Holy Spirit to come as we prepare for this wonderful feast of Pentecost, 
and we say, come Holy Spirit, and some of you have been doing that wonderful novena. I suddenly got guilty about Tuesday and realised I wasn't praying it myself, so I fished it out and I've been praying it ever since. It's a beautiful prayer too, it was a lovely prayer, wherever that came from. But um, we do all that, but I think we have to remind ourselves today, especially young and old, you young people as well, that the Holy Spirit is already here and with us. So that's the first thing I want to say. And we come today, even though we come to ask the Spirit to come and fill our hearts afresh, we actually come to celebrate the presence of the Holy Spirit. You wouldn't be here, I don't think, I'm going to say this, I don't think you'd be here if the Holy Spirit hadn't got you here this morning. Now you might have done all the ordinary things, and I don't know, you parents, grabbed the kids and hustled them all together, or you may have, or you kids may have said, oh, why are we going to St. Andrew's this morning? Why are we going over there? Whatever. But actually, the Holy Spirit brought us here, because it's the Holy Spirit who's already, in some deep and profound sense, united us. And we do come to celebrate, and there's no way in the wide world that me standing up here this morning doing the homily that I can cover all the ways that the Holy Spirit is at work amongst us in your families, in your schools, at your work, and those who serve the parish so faithfully in all sorts of ways. We'll come back to that in a minute with our gifts. So that's the first thing. Let's celebrate that. As we enter into this Mass and as the Lord comes and touches us again and I hope um, sets us on fire a bit more, a lot more if possible, Lord, I don't know about me, might have to be in steps, but sets us on fire again, let's remember that Gathered here this morning, the Holy Spirit is already with us, in and within us and among us. Second thing I'd like, and a couple of others, about three other things I'd like to say. The, 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 the first one is, did you hear that wonderful first reading? We've heard it so many times. And where um, the, the um, apostles and disciples are praying with our Blessed Mother and and praying for the Holy Spirit to come, and he comes on the Feast of Pentecost into the house. And they go out, and the apostles start preaching, and the others are talking and telling how wonderful God is. And there's a whole gathering of people. It's a great Jewish feast day in, in Jerusalem. And there's a whole gathering of people, mostly Jewish people. It says there's even some from Rome, some Romans there. Most of them are Jewish people, but they live in all sorts of different places. But they don't all speak the same language. They don't all speak Aramaic, which is probably the basic language that they spoke there in Jerusalem. Probably a lot of them speak Greek. But as the apostles and others start talking and preaching and talking about what God has done, they hear them in their own language. What a wonderful miracle. But I want to remind us today how many different cultures, origins, different peoples that we come from here. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? And one of the things about Pentecost, I think, is to remind us to respect and listen to and come to know all the different cultures amongst us. And that word culture is a really interesting one because we also have a little culture in our homes. We do things a certain way. We have a, a culture in our society, a big culture, kind of general thing that people do together. Part of it is our great materialist and internet world. But we, have a, we come from very profound and deep cultural places, places of difference. Rich, rich places. And it's really clear that the gospel comes to highlight what is good in our different cultures and to help us transform what is bad, what needs changing, put it that way, what needs growth. And there isn't any culture that doesn't need that renewal, that work of the Spirit. And one of the funny things about culture is that we often see what we think other cultures need, but we are hardest to see what we need to change ourselves. So that's the first thing. So one of the things I'd ask 
you, as the Spirit comes and fills our hearts today, is really work on that in the, in the year ahead. It means we, we bring the gospel to that. We bring the teaching of the church, the rich love of God, and we need to respect and listen and take time to get to know each other so that we can share our riches. The second thing is, and it comes from St. Paul's letter to um, the Corinthians, and he says this in more than one place. He says, there is a variety of gifts, but always the same spirit. There are all sorts of service to be done, but always to the same Lord. So again, when God is at work amongst us, he doesn't call us all to do the same thing. God's at work. And what we need to do is allow our gifts, our strengths. One of the kind of modern things about leadership is that you can do these, these um, self-awareness things that teach us something more about our own strengths and weaknesses. There is a test that we've been using a bit lately, and we hope to use some more called an APES test. And it's based on St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians. And you, you do this test, you answer all these questions carefully designed, and you find out what your strengths are in terms of ministry. So there's apostle, a prophet, an evangelist, a shepherd, a teacher. And sometimes we think we know ourselves really well, but it's very helpful sometimes to discover anew what we're gifted at, what our strengths are. Because it's much better to do God's work in the places where we're gifted, in the ways that we have strengths, because then we enjoy the work of God. Then, together, we can make up the body of Christ. Then we can realise that we don't have everything, that we need each other deeply. We need each other's gifts. And our parish would collapse if we weren't using all these different gifts. I can tell you that from my perspective. So that's one. And then this whole thing of service, that we're called to do different things in the body of Christ for the kingdom. Some of us are called to evangelise, always in love to be the people who have a gift of introducing other people to Jesus, of op helping them open up to the work of the Spirit. Some of us are prophets who call us to care more deeply for the earth. That's a great cry at the moment. And we need to hear the prophets say that so that we leave a better place for those that come after us. Some of us who are prophets are called to care more deeply for those who are struggling in our society, to challenge us, to help us face injustice, to help us help build the human fabric. Because when we do that, the gospel works better, if I can put it in that crude way. Some of us are called to be great prayers, I think sometimes if we remove the praying people, the deep praying people from amongst us, we'd collapse. We'd get an awful shock. Some of us are called to use our, our acumen, our financial, our business acumen. Some of us are called to join trade unions because we need to help care for those who struggle with their wages and their income. Politicians, whatever. But we do it from the perspective of the gospel, looking out from the rich and deep teachings of the church with love in our hearts. So that's the other thing I'd say as we go forward this year. Let's respect the gifts and differences and let's expect the Holy Spirit to release his own gifts amongst us too to help us do that better. Finally, on this great feast of Pentecost, when in the Mass, God fills us afresh, anew. A Pentecost that started at our baptism and confirmation, our own personal Pentecost. And there might be some young people here who are preparing for confirmation. That will be your Pentecost. But as we have that renewed and strengthened today, we hear the words of Jesus when he came and stood amongst his disciples. He said to them, as the Father sent me, 
so am I sending you. That's for you young people too, for you students, in your homes, at school, in your play, in your sports, in your work, and for all of us. As the Father sent me, says Jesus, so I send you. Let's go with great confidence, whatever the difficulties, into the next year, Pentecost to Pentecost, aware that the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us and that God is sending us to the places he has called us to. Shall we stand and profess our faith? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. Come to the prayers of the faithful. Now, so I'll invite those who are doing the prayers. Thank you, you young people, if you'd like to come forward. For the on this, church. I'll just say we are on this day of Pentecost when the church is filled with the power of God's Holy Spirit, united in Jesus, we make our prayers to the Father. For the church, that all who follow Christ will allow the Holy Spirit to penetrate their lives more deeply. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. You're right. Use your paper. Loka <laughs> Tende. Smartanatinai, Perishu Dama Ve, E. Locate, Nidio Deum, Smartanatin Deum, Oro Catamayai, Matuan, Catave, Nangalade, Patana, Kekaname. Lord. Who fear a nahi family? Ke hoko a nahi for a lao malia. I offer fear fear. Milino fa akataki. Anga offer honga ea. Fight a tongue. Anga malu. My mapu lei. Gita kine naohi mo foko tu tu u. M oi. Ke moi moi ki a nahi family. Lord hear us. Lord hear our prayer. Uri Tashinga, Uri Kundum Cheri, Viao Kido Abshida. Uriga Anjana, Songyang, Samura Yoyoiko, Apuro Takchil, Tojander, Kipumur, Unhasu, Ituro Kasoso. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For, for todas las personas que están 
enfermas o sufren, que el Espíritu Santo les traiga fuerza, salud y confort. Señor, ruega por nosotros. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Para sa mga kaluluwa ng mga yumao, upang sila ay maging ganap sa spiritang mabibigay buhay. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now pray the Pentecost prayer together. Spirit, We ask all these prayers and all the concerns of our heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God for bringing your paschal mystery to completion. You bestow the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. The same Spirit as the church came to birth open to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of the one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. In giving you thanks, he sent the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that uh, we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And let's remember, especially at this Mass today, those of our loved ones who have died in the year gone and those who have died in our parish. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for
In the parish, we are a family of families, a family of cultures. As we say, this great prayer that Jesus taught us, this family prayer, as we call on the loving Father, let's make a commitment as we pray this prayer to grow in our love for each other over the year ahead. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, the glory of the Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. O oh God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. I'm, I'm really sorry and lovely to have this Joseph's choir, little choir there, and we weren't able to sing some kind of technical hitch. So look, it's lovely that you came, and we're going to just assume we heard that. <laughs> that was really, I'm sorry about that. Um, one of our parishioners, Daniel, has a wonderful art exhibition in the foyer. So do take the time when you leave to have a look at that exhibition. Um, and anyone who wants to buy he, the, the paintings are there and he sells the, the, the copies of them. And he's um, contributing towards our two wonderful people, Ben and Kaylin, who are going to the World Youth Day this year. So please, if you want to do that, they're lovely, beautiful paintings. Um, there are a few things from St. Gregory's Catholic stall there too, so if you need medals or some rosaries or things, do have a look and see. There's some lovely stuff there. Um, at the end of Mass, um, I'm going to call all the children up for a bless to give us a blessing. And then when we finish Mass, we three priests here will stay here. And um, uh, you're welcome to come up for a special Pentecost blessing. So we'll give you a blessing. And you might like to say to the priest something you, you particularly want from the uh, Holy Spirit at this time, so do do that. Um, and we will have prayer teams available, I'll invite them up in a minute too after the young people. Could I just put another notice in, when we arrive today, there is a funeral here in this chapel and I really do want to thank St Andrews once again for the opportunity to use this wonderful chapel, it's really magnificent. Um, but we did shift all the cones in so you could park out there. But there's a funeral this afternoon. So would those who are walking past, as the cars move away from along, which you'll see where the cones are, just move them out onto the edge of the curb again. And that means that the place, or perhaps just, just off the curb onto the road there, so that when the funeral comes this afternoon, we've put the cones back for them. Okay? Anyone who's around who can do that, that'll be wonderful. It only took me about three minutes to put them back, put them on the pavement, and others, by the way. Very good. So what about we ask, first of all, the, all the children here, would you like to come forward? We're going to get you to do a special blessing of everybody else. Love. Good on you. Do you want to step up here next to me? Marvellous. Lovely. Great. Oh, good. Come down this end a bit too. Wouldn't you? That's lovely. Great. <laughs> Very good. So it's the feast of people. We've all been filled up this week. We're going to ask a special blessing on mum and dad and everyone here today. And all our parishioners who are not here too. Okay? We're able to come today. So what I'm going to get you to do is just speak out of your hand, like that, okay? And have we think about the fact that we're blessing everyone? Have we think about that? The Holy Spirit's with us. He, God really loves the prayers of children. I'll say we pray every minute. So just get that thinking of them. Right. Lord, you can see the hearts of these wonderful young people who um, are our future and our present. And we ask you, Lord, now through their prayers to, to specially bless all of these people here, all our parents and families and oh, everyone in every situation. Lord, hear the prayers of your young people and pour out a fresh you through this mass and in the prayers we make a, a blessing strength and grace for every need and we ask this through Christ our Lord Amen, Amen. Very good. Right. Very good.
quen The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing today. May God, the Father of lights, who was pleased to enlighten the disciples' minds by the outpouring of the Holy of the Spirit, the Paraclete, grant you gladness by his blessing and make you always abound with the gifts of the same Spirit. Amen. Amen. And before I do the other two, I just remembered the prayer teams. <laughs> Not too bad. I, Father Alistair said I had to ask him anything I forgot today. Well, I haven't done too badly. So in those who are doing prayer ministry, and remember, you're welcome to come to the priest for a blessing at the end, or you're welcome to come up for some prayer. You may have some deeper needs you might like to ask for. So lovely. Thank you. Great. So Lord, we ask you to bless these wonderful people whose part of their gifting is to pray for others and to pray for the needs of others. Bless them as they minister to your people today. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. May the wondrous flame that appeared above the disciples powerfully cleanse our hearts from every evil and pervade them with its purifying light. Amen. Amen. And may God, who has been pleased to unite many tongues in the profession of one faith, give you perseverance in the same faith. And by believing, may you journey from hope to clear vision. Amen. Ke whakapāinga koto e te atua kaharawa e te mātua e te tamaiti e te wairua tāku. Amen. Go. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. We have our final.